So I was just working away this morning at home on the computer and there was a knock on the door and a parcel arrived, another parcel. The only difference is this parcel isn't something I've ordered. It seems to be a surprise parcel. I believe it's from a friend of mine, Luke, and I have no idea what's inside, although I do have an inclination that it's a camera, but I've got absolutely no idea what it is. Could be anything. Hasselblad, maybe. Mm. Small and light. <laughs> no way. No way. What is this? I have no idea what this is. Luke is a great guy, a really great friend of mine. He's a poet, an artist, and a creative director of an advertising agency in London. We're both lovers of film cameras and of weird, obscure cameras and pieces of equipment as well. This is probably hence the reason he sent this. This is definitely obscure. It feels like some kind of rubberized case. I guess it's drop proof. I'm not gonna try and drop it right now, but this is hilarious. I actually don't have a point and shoot. I've been looking at point and shoots and actually talking to him on the phone about point and shoots quite a lot, which is probably why he sent this. So Luke, thank you, man. Let's just have a little look around it. It's pretty well beaten, which I love. I love cameras that have got some wear to them. By the look of the package, this has come directly from Japan. Japan's a great place to buy things from on eBay, by the way, because you get a lot less problems with optics and fungus and haze because of the lower humidity. If you are looking at eBay, don't be afraid to buy from Japan. I found that the prices out in Japan are a little bit cheaper than the UK, and by the time you've paid the import and the extra tax, it normally comes to roughly what the price is in the UK. And also they seem to rate their used equipment better, starting with an EXE plus five or something like that, and they work down from there. So you can clearly see where it's listed in the item description, the Japanese sellers seem to be a lot more upfront with the conditions of the items. And also this rating system really helps you to understand what the condition of the item is you're about to buy. Let's just take a little look around this and see what we can find. So it's clearly a little range finder, point and shoot. There's a little flash built in just here. It says durable, compact and full automatic. That's always good. Quite a nice sturdy grip on this. I guess it's rubberized for protection, but it's also quite good for grip. Looks like the eyes for the camera strap are built into the sides here. On the top, there's some writing in Japanese, which I have no idea what it says. Let's try and open up the film door. There seems to be a dial here for open. Oh, I was hoping I might find a little gem of an 80s or 90s Japanese film still in there. There we go, there's the back of the camera. I think it might need a clean out around the light seals. Actually, this is one of the things I wouldn't mind having a light leak on. I don't have any light leaks on any of my cameras, which I'm quite grateful for, but I do like the look of that light leak point and shoot vibe. So maybe this already has a light leak or maybe I can create one. On the bottom here, it seems to be where the battery goes. Now I'm assuming there is no battery in this because I can't seem to power it up. So let's see if we can get the battery door open. Looks like the terminals are clean. It takes a 2CR5 battery by the looks of things and luckily I have one of those. Yes, there we go. How often is it that you have an obscure battery for an item like this? Maybe this is not that obscure. Here we go. This is the moment of truth installing the battery into this old camera. Let's have a look. Okay, there's a power switch on the top. Hmm. Right, some very strange Terminator red light. Whoa! Seems to focus about a meter and a half away. Doesn't seem to have a close focus. So when I'm trying to focus on the camera here, it's just making this weird clicking sound and I was like, oh, it's broken. But as soon as I go to the other side of the room, oh, 
That's a naughty old point and shoot. Right, I'm gonna get this bad boy loaded up with film. In fact, I've only got black and white film, but hey ho, I'm gonna load it up so I can process it at home. I really wanna order some color film for this, so I'm probably gonna get some Kodak Gold or something like that. Just a cheap 35 mil film stock in color that I can shoot away on and see what I get. Let's see what we've got. I don't have a lot of 35 mil, but I'm gonna take this Ilford FP4, get this loaded up. Film tip goes here. So I really enjoyed shooting with that little camera. It was quite a nice experience. Very simple and easy to use. Felt great in the hand. It focused very quickly. I'm happy with the sharpness of the images. Ergonomically, it feels great. The rangefinder is nice and clear. In a way, it kind of feels like a toy camera, but it feels quite well built. I'm pretty happy with the optics, and I'm certainly sold on the rugged durability of the camera, which leads me on to something quite interesting. Now, I did do a little bit of research into the camera. There's not a great deal out there. But there is a fantastic article out there by 35MMC, which I will link down in the description of the video. But the history of this little camera is actually pretty interesting indeed, and not one that I expected at all. In Japan, the camera was called the Genba Kantoku, which translates to Sight Supervisor. The cameras themselves were actually designed for the construction industry in Japan to document building work. Now, for me, that is incredibly interesting. It's such a specific and niche target. Apparently, Konica weren't the only company to release construction-style cameras. I find this really interesting because it's designed for one specific purpose. And the idea of repurposing it for, say, street photography or general day-to-day -day life nowadays, I think is really, really interesting. One of the features specific to the camera, which I actually mentioned earlier in the video, but I had no idea what it was for, is this here. Now this is actually meant to be a name tag holder. Take a look at this image of one of the other cameras in the orange color, where you can clearly see the tag has a construction worker logo next to it. I love these kind of stories behind cameras. For me, that's one of the reasons for using old analog film cameras is the history, the story, and the different feeling and approach that you get as a result of using those cameras. So this is the 35 mil lens version. There was also a 28 mil focal length version. They also released a 40 to 60 mil dual lens camera, as well as a 28 to 56 mil zoom. Now I haven't actually had hands on any of the others. Luke who sent me the camera has told me that he also has the 28 mil, which I'm really looking forward to seeing as well. And perhaps we'll get out on a photo walk together and use the 28 and 35 and see how they compare. Of course, now knowing the background of the camera, it's quite clear why there's all the durable rubber exterior and grips and the build quality and aesthetics make a lot more sense. Now I do believe that they released these in olive green, orange, blue and gray, all the utilitarian kind of colors. I'm quite fond of this gray. Now I did have a look over eBay to see what other Konica's were available from this range and there doesn't seem to be that many at the time of recording this video. So I'd imagine that the other colors and the other ranges are relatively scarce. They seem to range between the 60 to 120 pound mark, which I think is remarkable value for something like this. The optics and the focusing are fantastic. It's by no means optically the most superior camera out there, but I think for the money and the rugged durability and the history of the camera, I think it's fantastic. So a couple of interesting quirks I just want to run through with the camera. One thing which I've not really seen that much of before is a haptic feedback system whereby when you touch a button it vibrates and makes a sound. At first that's what I thought was the shutter not firing properly. The same happens when you focus, you get this click which you can mistake for the shutter firing, but it's actually the confirmation of autofocus. So if you do buy this camera, just take your time to get used to that. I actually quite like the haptic feedback system. I think given the lack of controls, it's just a nice touch and feel, but it obviously does make some sound, not a drastic amount of sound, and the shutter's quite quiet. So for me, this is pretty good for street photography. In terms of controls, you have an on and off switch here, and then you can cycle through the flash modes here, turning on, off, and auto, and then your shutter. 
and that's pretty much it in terms of features and functions. As I say, that's what really attracts me to cameras like this is the simplicity to be able to take it away on a trip somewhere, whip it out of a bag, take a shot and put it back in again without having to worry too much about settings. That's part and parcel of the usability and the aesthetics of point and shoot for me. Another really interesting thing is as I was shooting through the frames, I got to 36 and imagine that the film would rewind by itself, but it didn't and it allowed me to shoot onto 38. Now I did think that was a winding issue to begin with, but when I'd finished developing the negatives, I noticed that it had actually shot right the way to the end of the roll. Luckily, as you can see, I ended up cutting out of the canister quite close to the edge of the spool without cutting into the negative. But something you definitely want to do if you own this camera is make sure to either tell your lab there's 38 exposures on the reel, not 36, or to cut close to the spool if you're developing at home. Because of course you wouldn't want to cut off those last two images unintentionally. But actually that's a nice little bonus, an extra two images per roll, I'm not complaining. So I think as a roundup, I'm pretty happy with the camera. I would definitely recommend it to anyone. It's fun, it takes great pictures, easy to use, relatively affordable. The next thing I'm gonna do is shoot some color film through it. So I've picked up some Kodak Gold and some Fuji 100. I'll be popping those in for a photo walk soon. I might end up sharing those pictures as well. I'm really looking forward to using this little camera again. I might even head out and photograph some building sites. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any more questions about the Konica, please drop them down in the comments below. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, take care, and I'll see you soon.